Arsenal have had one bid rejected for Declan Rice already, and the second bid is going in as we speak. The first bid was called embarrassing by a club insider, the structure of the deals over six years. And now Arsenal rumoured to be coming back in with a 91 million plus 10 million on add-ons deal. Now that 1 million, it's given me Suarez vibes, <laughs> to be honest. We're in, pound, <laughs> it's me and Nicky here. With, we're joined by Robbie from AFTV. First of all, thanks for coming on, Robbie. And obviously DR Sports. Robbie, first question. Are you lot having a laugh or what? Like, what is this, that, that first bid? 90 million's having a laugh. No, I mean, let's look at that first, let's look at that first bid, right? The 80 million plus 10 million add-ons paid over six years. Like, was that a serious bid? Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know what it is, right? Most, I, I, I can see where people get wind up, right? Because um, most people feel that when, say, somebody says a player's 50 million, that it's all paid straight away. And it's very, I've spoken to agents on this, very rarely, is all of that money paid up front. No, of course, yeah. It's staged over a period of time. I've not, not known six years, six that years. is a long time, yeah. right? But you you hear a deal is staged over three years or four years or stuff like that, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, six years, that does seem a bit long. And I did hear as well, you know, it's funny enough, it's on Monday. Um, sorry, it was not Monday, it was uh, Wednesday, just when the transfer window opened. And I was actually speaking to an agent and he said to me, he goes, he knows somebody who's sort of near to the Arsenal Declan Rice deal that they're trying to do. And he was saying to me that, Robbie, because there was a lot of rumours going around from the previous weekend that Arsenal had bid 100 million. Yeah. And he said to me, he goes, Robbie, they haven't bid nothing yet. But they feel pretty confident that Declan Rice wants to come to Arsenal. So... They're taking their time, they're, 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 and they're not. And he goes, and they're not going to go in immediately with a hundred million. They're going to go in under, mm. which is exactly what happened that very next day. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, I can see what. Listen, I, as, as West Ham fans, I can see why you guys are irritated by it. It's your best player. You want to you you get a top dollar for it, but again, from an Arsenal side, you know what I mean? You've got to negotiate, and you, you you can't just go. If you, you think about it, if if uh, Edu goes and slaps a hundred million pound on the table straight away. Um, you probably turn around and say you want one hundred and twenty. Yeah, but you're way off in terms. How, how, sorry, yeah. how reliable do you think these sources are? Because we've got obviously we've got our own sources in the club, and mm. you've got your own sources at, uh, at Arsenal now. Because what I'm starting to look at now is a little bit like <coughs> I'm hearing rumours, and yeah, it's already done, it's already agreed, and all this. It's not done. It's, but is that not tapping up? If he's already been talking to Arsenal... Before... No, but you can now, isn't it? Because you, I don't, I don't be... know. He's under contract. No, but the, the transfer window's open, so you can talk to players. Now? But I was hearing this before. I was hearing this months yeah, and like months that. ago. Yeah, like February. They talk, don't they? Yeah. They talk. And, and, and if you think about it, so I was hearing from January that we're going after him in, yeah. in, in the summer. So if you think about it, in January, they could talk to Declan Rice and Declan Rice is a representative course, yeah. and they can say to him, you know what, we actually want you in the summer. What's the likelihood? Where are you planning to go? Mm. It, you know, I mean, they do do that. So there'll be loads of talks going on before. But even with that, even when you say tapping up, I think that still carries on all the time because, you know, what, what is tapping up? You know, I mean, if, if you get onto the phone during the season and you speak to the agent, not the player, and you just say, yeah, I just wanted to find out, man, what, what, what's, what's Declan's contract coming to an end? What's his plans? I'm only, I'm only yeah. playing devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I, know. Yeah. I get it. Why? Well, yeah, I mean, because you know, but I think, I think these, I think these things happen beyond the scenes yeah. all the time. The sticking point, I think, is with this structure. Is it's reported that West Ham want the majority up front, yeah. and that's why, and, and and Arsenal know this, and that's why I think West Ham was so shocked or mm. outraged when that six-year thing came in because we've said. You know, we want 100 million plus a player or 120 million. We want it mostly up front. Now, obviously, negotiations, <coughs> like you're right, you come mm. in and you go, all right, well, we'll give you 90 million. Then, I mean, the add ons were a bit silly themselves. Like, if we win the Champions League or the Premier League, we chuck you an extra 10 million. There you go. Like, I just think, like, to I go think they could have structured road, that a bit better. Yeah. In, in terms of, like, let's be honest, Champions League and Premier League is not going to be. Let, let, let me put this to you, right? 
And I see this happen all the time. It's not just West, West Ham. And these clubs are very smart, right? When they're doing, doing these deals and they play the fans. They play the yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so West Ham, for instance, yeah? Your owners and your negotiators and that, they know that not every West Ham fan is going to be happy that they're losing their best player. Yeah, of course. Right? And you can't so, do nothing to stop that. But all of you have accepted that uh, he's going to go, so you're cool with that, right? But the one thing all of you are thinking to yourself is that we want a maximum amount of money for him, right? So when those stories have been put out there, like, you know, oh, yeah, you know, they were going to structure it over six years and they were only going to pay us this amount. I, I feel that a lot of that's been, that, a lot of that's put out there for you guys, for the fans, for you guys to have, you know, have a bit of outrage. Um, then as well, they'll know that like Arsenal fans, we'll have a bit of outrage as well because we'll be like, well, just get it done, whatever it takes. Just yeah, put yeah. the money on the table and that. So he's forcing the West Ham um, board there, probably doing that to show oh, you yeah. guys that, listen, we're serious and we're serious at getting top dollar for our player. And then they're also doing it so that they know that um, the Arsenal fans you. will put our owners and our negotiators under pressure to say, yeah, we'll just get it done so they can get more money. And I mm. truly believe that. It happens all the time do you, do you where these things are played off because structured deals are literally every deal. Like, I think no, the no, reason no, yeah. why... Go on, Sorry, do you, do you think that West Ham have strengthened their hand or weakened their hand by the Sullivan comments the day after? Now, we, we saw Declan Rice after the game, yeah? Declan Rice has sat there and said, look, I'm playing for West Ham. I'm here, as far as I know, I'm here for two more years. That's what my contract says. I know there's interest from other clubs, but I'm, I'm happy enough to stay here. And off he plops with his European trophy. And, you know, obviously we know internally that Declan wants to go on to win trophies, to win this. And then the next day, David Sullivan goes, no, actually, he doesn't want to stay here. He wants to leave. We know he wants to leave. We've told him he can leave. Um... And we're ready to sort of open negotiations with clubs now because we can't keep a player here that, you know, doesn't want to be here. Now, I, I understand that's from a PR point of, point of view. You know, if, if they accept a club for Declan Rice after he said that and they've said nothing, then they look like the bad guys. Whereas now they've put it back onto Declan Rice. But does that statement, Rob, strengthen or weaken our hand? I, I don't think it weakens our hand <coughs> because I think... Um, it's pretty well known. It's well known that yeah. he's going. And I think if he turned around and said, well, listen, we're going to try everything we do we can to keep Declan mm -hmm. Rice and they've got some sort of gentleman's agreement, which it looks that way, doesn't it? Because you know, he, he, I heard him saying that he could have went from before, he could have even, he sort of turned down even a pay rise. Yeah. To, right? So if he turns around and says, no, nah, nah, we're going to do all we can to make him stay and, you know, Declan Rice's representative might be on the phone to him and say, no, oh, what? What are you doing? What are you doing, man? You know what I mean? You said we could go, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think there's, you know, right. he's been put on the spot in an interview he said what he said, but he, everybody knows that Declan Rice is going somewhere. He's, he's moving on, right? So, but where he's smart, I feel, is that all the talk about the Man City and that. Now, we don't know. I don't, I don't know if Man City are involved. It's Chelsea today, apparently. Chelsea. Chelsea we heard, uh, yeah. Before that, it was Bayern. You know what I mean? Those are the smart moves because those, again, if you're an Arsenal fan and you start hearing that Man City are involved... You know, you start to put pressure or, you know, you verbally start putting it out there and journalists write about it and that, that, you know, just whatever they want, just give it a win. Don't, we cannot afford to miss out on this deal. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of, so much Do you, do you not business. believe these other clubs are interested? Do you think Arsenal... I'm not sure, clubs? I'm not sure if Chelsea are interested. I, I think, listen, I think Man City... Man City might be uh, showing an interest. Um, they're, they, I mean, they're, they're the best club around at the moment. So, and they might be saying, you know, they got a lot of money to spend as well. So they might be saying, but I, I just don't. Chelsea, they bought Enzo Fernandez. They've got to get rid of all these players. They, now, they, they're talking yeah. to Caicedo. It's a mess. I, 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 I don't think Chelsea, yeah. and, and then as well, why would he go there? Because they're not even in the Champions League. No. Yeah. So yeah, right. I, I don't think Chelsea, I think City is a serious proposition if they come in. But even with them, they've got Rich, um, Calvin Phillips. They've got Rodri who plays in that position. Gundogan, yeah. we don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I'm not sure, but you can't discount City because, you know, if they come in, yeah. I want to get your opinion on a theory I've got. Um, 
regarding FFP and the structure of the deal that's laid out, <laughs> that Arsenal potentially are putting out a, a longer term payment plan because, you know, of FFP. I mean, you're, you're paying a lot of wages. You want to spend big this summer. And, you know, that helps you do so and get under the radar because everyone's subject to FFP will accept, you know, mm. maybe Man City. Yeah, um, sure. But then us, we want the majority of it up front as well for our FFP concerns because we want to go and immediately <coughs> invest that money and strengthen the whole squad yeah. as a whole. Well, that, that's it. And again, that's what I say. A lot of people that understand with um, transfer deals, that's exactly why they are spread out because of FFP. Yeah. So, you know, you don't want to spend all that money in one window. Right, so if you spread it out, it shows up as less on your balance sheet, and you can go and buy more players. And that's exactly why you saw Chelsea in January with all these eight-year contracts. Mm. So basically, you know, I mean, if you spread a eighty million payment over eight years on your balance sheet, it shows up you're spending ten million this year, ten million that year. But if you go and give it all at once, that's eighty million out of your account immediately. Hence, why you see like a team like Arsenal wanting to not pay 60, 70 million up front um, because, you know, they want to go and get other players. They, they don't want to just get Declan Rice. You know I mean, we need at Arsenal, we need more than that for this summer. So, but if we just show that all as one, you know, that's what FFP has done. How much would you pay? <sighs> really? Yeah, what's your walking away point? Like, if, if, if I think it, it's 100 million. Max. No I think more. it's 100 million. Not um, 120? Because Plus, we've had these arguments, we've had these arguments on DR Sport <coughs> and AFTV for years. How much is he worth? I remember talking to Belgium, saying he wouldn't pay more than thirty million quid. For <laughs> well, you do, do, but do you know what? Do you, know, do you understand yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I don't think I don't think right. He's worth over a hundred million, right? As great a player as he, I really rate him highly. I don't think he's worth over a hundred million. I, 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 there's very few players out there that I think are worth hundred million. Plus. So would you would you want Arsenal if we if we said no, he has to be hundred and twenty? Or uh, walk away? Would you want to sit, rather see your club walk away or just go, do you know what? Slap down the 120 is the player we want. It depends what the plan B is. Yeah, it was it uh, what the plan L- Livia? Lavia, is it? Lavia, Lavia. these are players that Zubamendi plays for um, Rio Sociedad. Do you know what I mean? I, I do think, that, listen, we all as fans will say, slap it down and think it's yeah, not it's, easy to talk. it's not your money and things, things like that. But I do think. You have to be sensible as a football club, even long term with your negotiations. Because if you're known as a club that just slaps down whatever, then every time you go to buy a player after that, that's what happens. Yeah. If you're known as a club that, yo, they will walk away, that's what City, if you actually, I rate how City do business. You know, with the Harry Kane thing, they just said, oh, that's our limit. Oh, we ain't going over 100 million. Yeah. When Daniel Levy was saying 150 million for, they go, nah, nah, no chance. Yeah. Yeah. And they just walked away. Yeah, got Haaland. So, yeah, and so any club that City are dealing with, they know that despite the fact they got all this money, if that deal is not, you know, reasonable or is not sensible, they're, they're going to yeah. walk away. Now, I think 100 million pounds for Declan Rice, I think is, you know, in the current market is fair. Yeah. I think you start talking about 120 and that. I think that's like a bit overpriced. Well, what well, about this then? Okay, so it's rumoured that Arsenal have got a couple of sort of cash flow issues. But I think that's what we spoke about mm. in the finance fair play. Is there anything that could sweeten the deal? Could you stick in an ML Smith Pro or a... Well, that was football, the thing, isn't it? 100 million plus a player was what we would take something as an alternative like to 120. I, would, I wouldn't want to see Arsenal doing that. I'd just rather them just pay the money and that's it. I don't, I don't think... Nobody. Not one Well, player. unless it was a player that we wanted to move on, like a, you know, maybe a Sammy the Conga or... Oh, Lee, Lee, you've got to pay us an extra know. 20, like an extra <laughs> 20 if we take the You know what I was saying today? I don't think he's a bad player. You know? I think he's He actually, didn't do well at Palace, did he? He did, he, he did all right at Palace, but then they, when Roy came in, he didn't use him. But I just feel that he's a player that if he goes somewhere where he can play a lot and have him build his confidence, I think he'd be, mm. he, he'd actually be all right. But... Yeah, there has to be a limit, isn't it? You, you, otherwise you just... That's what... This is the mess that Chelsea are in. Because yeah. they've just paid whatever. Yeah, yeah. And now How much do you want for him? Yeah. Oh, Arsenal have bid 70, I oh, will get 80. Oh, they bid that, we'll get... And now look at the mess that they're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the time, all their, all their fans, right, were jumping up and down when they outbid us from Mudrick. And that, and they're all saying, oh, yeah. And, they, and, and, and I'll <coughs> tell the other ridiculous one that they did, right, is they... 
they paid £19 million in loan fee for, for um, in a loan deal for Felix. 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 When every other club in Europe that he was touted around to said, how much? Are you yeah. crazy? Are well, so you asking us to buy the player? Yeah. What, for a six-month loan deal? When, in reality, it's not even six months. It's just from January to May. Yeah. They're like, what, for loan for f- four or five months? No chance. And Chelsea, and now look at the Felix has gone back. They can't afford to buy him at the moment on a full contract. They've got all these players on these long-term contracts. They've got about 30, 40 people in their squad. And now all of that is just a complete mess. They're trying to offload quick, aren't they? Yeah. You know, you know you've got Pai yes. Everts and Mason so you, Mount, they want all yeah, these people. Yeah, you've got to run people. your club but what properly. About- I get it. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm that fan sometimes as well who's just saying, I'm probably being a bit hypocritical because I'm that fan sometimes who's saying, just get him, but... The reality of it is you're bargaining, you're doing business, you, you know what I mean? So, and you have to have a limit. You, you have to have a limit. And I always say, as long as there's a plan B, if that don't work out, that if you walk away, you can go and get someone else who's like, maybe he wouldn't be Declan Rice, but he'd be up there or someone you could potentially turn into. Mm-hmm. Kimmich or yeah, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Do you so, think people like Chelsea at the moment, I think this is deja vu, really. They're dictating, they're dictating the transfer fees, aren't they? 106 million pounds, is it for yeah, yeah, Enzo? yeah. They're sort of like Crazy. they're dictating the market, really. They're affecting the market because they're yeah. because we look at that. We look at well, they're paying that for Man, Enzo. Might, <laughs> might not as well when you see sort of look see Maguire, them pay yeah. 75 million pound for Sancho and 80 million pound for Maguire, and then people are snubbing in those at well, 100 million for Declan. The, big, the biggest example of that, right, was um, when we went to get Mudrick here. Yeah? We were quoted um, 80, 85 million by his agents. They like by Shakhtar, Shakhtar and it. So we want 85 million, right? And what they then said after that, they said, because Anthony went from Ajax to mm-hmm. Man United for 85. Mm-hmm. And we think Mudrick is better, so we want 85. So those are the things that then start to inflate the market. Look at Anthony. Is he worth anywhere near? He's not, I'm not saying he's a terrible player, but he's not worth nowhere near You're 85 right. million pounds. Mm, yeah. So this is the problem. Like, as fans, we see that shiny thing and we're like, yeah, especially when they're coming from abroad. And we're just like, yeah, go and get him, man. Yeah. And then when we see them playing now, we're like, 80 million. He's good. He's all right. But not 80 million pounds. You could have paid 30 million and got the same sort of type of player. Or you could even. You could have. What, what about sometimes bringing someone through your academy? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, you know, there, there's that as well. You know what I mean? We, you know, we'll be going to other countries and getting their academy players when we've got these great academies over here, and we're not even bringing through some of our guys. Yeah, some true. of that, uh, you know, the players in question that we're talking. Some of the players in question we're talking about. Declan Rice come through your academy. Saka mm-hmm. come through our academy. Declan Rice, the best player at your club, best player at our club, Saka, for our own academies. Yeah? Chelsea have got an excellent academy, right? Some of the best players in, the, actually, the best players in their team, like Reese James and that, have come through their academy. Well, look at yeah, them. But yet, still, they go and splash all this stuff, these money on all these players from all over. Sometimes you've got the players right there in your you've own got, academy. You've got two yeah. of the greatest Premier League players of all time that come through their academy. They didn't play for them, but they play for Manchester City and Liverpool. But they're, they're two of the Premier League greats that would have, you know, won everything. Won the, everything. The Bruyne and Salah. The Bruyne and Salah, I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. They come through their academy. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So sometimes, but as I said, it's like, I don't know, sometimes in the transfer windows and transfer yeah. business, the people just go mad. But the, with the Declan Rice thing, I think for us, well, listen, I'd love to get him. He'd be a, he fits the profile. He ticks every box for me um, for what we need. So it'd be a, it's, it's going to be expensive, but I, I, I think if Arsenal pay 100 million or 101 million, yeah. as he said, I'll be all right with that. He's already gone in my mind, but my ideal situation is I wake up tomorrow morning and Declan Rice says, you know what, fuck all this talk, I'm going to sign a new contract. But that ain't going to happen. That's the dream deal. But if he goes to Arsenal, good luck to you. That's so what I would say. Before we go, commit, we want to get, see if I can get his commit to tape, <laughs> as they say, right? Let us know, put your neck on the line. Do you think you're getting our um, De- Arsenal getting Declan Rice? And if so, what is the figure that you feel you will get him for? I think we'll get him. I do think we'll get him for 100 million. I think it will go to 100 million. Or, and this is another thing, right? So when I talk about the thing for fans and the thing, 
this thing add-ons mm. is the latest thing, right? So if, I, I, what, what, there was a deal I was thinking of the other day. Um, what was it? Uh, that McAllister deal. Yeah. So to every Liverpool fan, McAllister cost 35 million pounds plus add-ons. Yeah. To every Brighton fan. Right. To every Brighton fan, he cost 50 million pounds. Yeah. Right. So each owner has sold it differently. But the reality of, of it is probably did cost 50 million. Yeah. It depends right? on because the add ons because if it's appearance based add ons, then we, they're going to be. But half of the time, we don't know what these add ons are. Yeah. We don't know what they are. If they're league, those, Champions League add ons, that's. But a lot of time, those add ons are just like add ons. Right? Yeah, we'll yeah. pay you the extra 50 million at the end. That's yeah, the add ons. Got the same thing with Jules so, Bellingham, right? 88 million pounds it cost Real Madrid. Yeah. But in reality, it's 120. It's 150 yeah. million or, or 150 or whatever. Yeah. So to me, that's the latest thing now the add ons thing. And as I said, it's a smart way of appeasing both, sets, know, of both sets of fans. Because yeah, yeah. um, every Liverpool fan's like, we got an absolute steal because we only paid 35 million. But yeah. the reality is they paid 50. So it could be even a thing where it's like, you know, 10 appearance. X amount plus add ons or something yeah, like yeah. that. But um, I do think we'll get him. Um, Brilliant. Well, well, thank, you, thank you very much. If we yeah, do. all right. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see how this ages in the coming weeks. Big thank you to Robbie no, for coming. Cheers, thank you. Always cheers, a pleasure. Man. Listen, best of luck with it. We hope he stays. Go and check out our super debate on as AFTV. AFTV. Yeah, that got very sticky, didn't it? Yeah, it got very <laughs> sticky, very heated. It's a great watch. Go check that out and stay tuned for all the other stuff we've got coming up. One thing left to say. Come on, you irons.